Back when I was at my first internship with a large corporation, I met my first CEO. He was a tall, handsome guy who was sociable, charismatic, would say hi to every employee in the elevator, and always knew how to put on a smile. Having a warm demeanor and all of these qualities definitely made me like him more as a leader. Then there was the CMO of our company. He was still a really nice guy and was able to talk well during these big meetings, but when it comes to the day to day or passing down the halls, he wasn't really someone that would actually say hi and he seemed a bit more mild mannered. And for some reason back then, I thought that he was, you know, unfavorable or obviously the CEO was much more charismatic than he was. But in reality, he was probably just more of an introvert. And that's kind of the unfortunate reality that we in this Western society live in today. We tend to favor extroverts more than introverts. The truth is, having extroverted qualities just makes a better impression on people. Because they're louder, they're more likely to have more influence, therefore they have better social networks, they end up being happier, they end up landing more job promotions. So there are a lot of benefits to being an extrovert in the workplace. However, because someone may have all these qualities, it doesn't necessarily mean that they may be the best fit for the job. In fact, according to a Wharton study, introverted leaders can be more effective bosses than extroverted leaders because of their ability to listen. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about introverts being in an extroverted world, as well as how we as introverts, because I am also an introvert, can succeed in the workplace. Now, I just want to say that before we continue any further, this video is not meant in any way to bash on extroverts, but rather show that having extroverted qualities doesn't necessarily make you the right fit for the job. A great example of this would be the Warren Harding error. If you guys don't know who Warren Harding is, then it's no surprise that you don't because he was actually named one of the top most forgettable presidents in the United States. So back in the 1920s, I think a journalist found Warren Harding without like any political experience, now correct me if I'm wrong, but they just saw him and they were like, wow, he looks so stately looking, whatever that means. And um, I had to look up what stately means and it means someone who seems very dignified. So basically just how he presented himself already made people like him more. Once Warren Harding won the Republican nomination, he eventually became president, even though he was much more known for being a womanizer and a poker player rather than an actual president with political experience. Warren Harding ended up dying of sickness not too long later, and he didn't even finish his presidential term. He died within like a year or two. And now people call this phenomenon where people actually misjudge you for being better than you actually are the Warren Harding error. And it just comes to show that even though you may present all of these extroverted qualities, it does not actually mean that you're a good leader. Surprise. I'd argue that to be a good leader, I think you need both extroverted and introverted qualities. So what are some introverted qualities? Introverts tend to be more reflective, more self-aware, use quiet time to concentrate, and they tend to do better when they're alone. They're very thoughtful, they enjoy solitude, and they're very good listeners. So as someone who's been introverted all my life, and someone who's been pretty shy for the most part just up until recently, I kind of realized earlier on that if I wanted to move forward in the workplace or in any social setting, I would need to be more sociable. And the thing about being sociable is that this is a quality, or a skill rather, that can be learned. That's why they're called social skills. So if you are an introvert, I think you already do have part of the puzzle down. Because introverts are good listeners, they're empathetic, they have higher EQ, they know how to read other people's body language. So if you are an introvert, I would strongly suggest using that to your advantage and being more perceptive to how people feel in different situations. If someone's feeling uncomfortable, then you can figure out why. Why are they uncomfortable? Are they just like hot? Are they cold? Are they nervous around a particular someone in the group? Do they perform better when someone is or isn't around? 
Like these are all things that you can start to figure out once you become a good observer. And of course, not only an introvert can do this, extroverts can do this as well. Now, once you hone your observation skills a little bit more, I think as an introvert, it's a great idea to build relationships individually. For me, I don't tend to perform well in bigger groups and my social networks tend to be a little smaller. I like to have small friend groups instead of just one big one. Now, of course, I'm only speaking for myself, but if you are someone who performs better in smaller social groups, then obviously try to leverage that to your advantage. Introverts can come off as abrasive just because they are on the quieter side. And the thing with introverts is like, just because we are quiet, it doesn't actually mean that we don't like you or we're rude, we just, don't have anything to say, that's really it. And sometimes an extroverted person isn't going to understand that, so what you can do as an introvert is first explain that, but also show that you aren't as antisocial as you may seem by reaching out to them and being like, hi, I'm so-and-so, and you know, th these are my thoughts on XYZ project. Just because you are introverted doesn't actually mean you have to be shy. So a common misconception that a lot of people have about introverts is that we are shy. Yes, a lot of us can be shy, but being introverted is not the cause of being shy, if that makes sense. Being introverted solely means that we gain energy when we spend time alone as opposed to extroverts, where they gain energy from spending time with other people. Now, I know we tend to categorize ourselves as introverts or extroverts, but in reality, it's really a spectrum. So I call myself an introvert, but I really am like 55% introvert. That means I do have extroverted qualities. They're just not as pronounced as my introverted qualities. Now, building relationships individually or in group settings can be taxing on an introvert's energy. And if you don't have that bandwidth, you need to, you know, be self-aware of that. Remote work has been great for introverts because, you know, prior to 2020, there were a lot of startups, offices that tend to emphasize the open office space where everyone is just closer together and it's supposed to enforce more collaboration, more cohesion, unity you know, X, Y, Z. But the problem with open office space is that it gets noisy and it tends to break your concentration more often than not. And that's not a very good thing for introverts. Introverts like to take time to concentrate on one thing and be left alone. So now that everyone's working from home, this has been great for introverts because we can just enter our flow state easily and, you know, perform our best work. I'm not naive enough to think that you could just self-help your way out of this. If you find yourself performing better when you work from home, then obviously you want to try to find a role that allows you to work from home. If you prefer flexible, then pick flexible. If you want to be in the office, be in the office. If it weren't 2020 anymore, I would have recommended that you find an office space that allows you to find a private area where you can be your introverted self and also provide spaces where you can actively collaborate with others. And when it comes to brainstorming and collaboration, just know that introverts are also in the room. Like there's a reason you hired that introvert. It's because they have the skills required to perform the job well. I think when you become cognizant of everyone in the room, you make everyone feel heard, you make everyone feel seen, and you make everyone feel like they matter. Like that's the key to getting other people to like you. You don't necessarily have to agree with them on everything that they say, but as long as you respect them for who they are and as long as you're willing to listen to them, like that's really all you need as not just an introvert really, but just as a human. Like I know this video was about introverts trying to succeed in the workplace, but I think it's more or less trying to understand how to be a better human being. I think as you become a better human, as you become a better person, naturally people are going to like you in the workplace you will become more sociable more charismatic and eventually gain favor and get higher positions and of course i could be wrong because you know i haven't been in a senior role and i haven't been in like huge corporate settings in a while so if i am wrong please let me know given that i am in a startup and i don't have many colleagues obviously there's more space for me to speak and make my voice heard if you are an introvert 
and you want to make an impact, maybe startups are for you. If you are an introvert, I would definitely love to hear your thoughts on like how you try to advocate for yourself, advocate for others in the workplace, how you perform, whether you feel like you are represented fairly. Until next time, take it easy.